If your sleepy newborn has turned into an absolute terror, so they're waking every one to two hours at night and will only sleep when you are holding them, then you might be wondering what has happened. I can tell you what's happened. Your little one is going through the four month sleep regression. Now this is not a phase, it is actually a permanent developmental change that has happened in your baby's brain and it's completely normal. But unfortunately there's some bad habits that we can fall into which can make the four month sleep regression significantly worse. So if this is something that you are going through and you have no idea what to do, then make sure you stick around where you will find out what you can do right now to make the four month sleep regression significantly easier and more importantly what you need to avoid doing if you want to stop that broken sleep. But before we do make sure you click on that free pdf document in the description box below which covers the developmental milestones you can be expecting for your little one in their first year of life. This will give you an invaluable peace of mind as you'll know when to be expecting skills and when to be concerned. Firstly, let's talk about what has happened to your baby's sleep. So when they're in the newborn phase, your baby was cycling through two different stages of sleep, light and deep sleep. And they would have stayed asleep if they were still tired and weren't hungry, uncomfortable or in pain. But somewhere between the three to five month old mark, children's sleep patterns change and they actually mature. And what happens is instead of going through two stages of sleep, they go through four stages of sleep. And after the fourth stage of sleep, they will partially or fully wake up. And at this point, your baby is now going to need that sleep association to go back to sleep. So if you are using a dummy or you're patting your little one, shushing them or feeding them to sleep, they are going to need that again. So typically parents will report that their baby is now waking every 30 to 45 minutes during the day or at night time they will sleep well for the first half of the night but towards the second half of the night when the baby is now in lighter sleep they are waking every one to two hours and needing help to fall back to sleep or <laughs> their little one just will not go back to sleep. So they are waking every one to two hours throughout the night. Now that is essentially the four month sleep regression. And there are some things that you can do right now to make it easier. The first thing you wanna do is keep an eye on your baby's awake time. So babies fall asleep best when they are tired, not overtired. If you have an overtired baby, they are going to cry more at bedtime. So they find it harder to fall asleep. They also find it significantly harder to stay asleep. So they're going to wake more often. So what you wanna do is if your baby is under four months of age, you wanna be giving them a nap every 45 to 120 minutes. Now, if your child is over four months of age, so four to six months of age, they should be able to stay awake for two to two and a half hours and then need a nap. Now, it is important to remember that cat napping, so only having 30 to 45 minute naps during the day from three and a half, four months of age, all the way up to five and a half, six months of age is completely normal. The second thing you wanna do is keep an eye on the number of night feedings that you are doing. Now, what you wanna do is do two things. Firstly, you wanna feed your little one during the day in an environment which isn't extremely distracting because at four months of age and up, they tend to be extremely distracted by what's going on in the environment and they don't feed as well. So if you do it in a quieter environment, then they are going to have full feeds. The second thing you wanna do is just be aware of what's typical in regards to night feedings for children. So if a child is three months of age, they would generally only need two to three feeds in the night after having a good stretch of sleep in the beginning. So typically they might be able to sleep four to five hours and then they might wake for feeds for the rest of the night. If your child is anywhere between four and six months of age, they may only need two to one feedings during the night. And that again is after having a good stretch of sleep in the beginning. So that might be five to six hours of sleep and then they may wake for feeds. If you notice that your little one's feeds during the night are increasing, so when they're a newborn, they may have only waked three times and now they're waking four or five times, 
then you may be able to safely assume that they are now using you to fall asleep or that fee to fall back asleep. What you want to do is work out what are the true feeds. So if the little one is having a large amount of formula or uh, spending a long time having that breast milk, then that's probably a true food. But if they are only having a small amount of formula or only staying on the breast for a few minutes, then that is more likely to be a sleep association. And what you want to do is switch out those times with another sleep association, such as padding or shushing, which is going to be easier to fade than a formula or breastfeed. The third thing you want to do is remember to pause. Babies are extremely noisy sleepers and they now wake between sleep cycles. So what you wanna do is remember to pause if you hear your little one become noisy just for a few minutes and see if they go back to sleep. The fourth thing you wanna do is make sure that you keep the bedroom dark, cool, and quiet. Now you wanna keep it dark for two reasons. Firstly, it helps to potentially lengthen the time that they are napping in the day. And that is because if the room is dark enough that they can't actually read a book, when they wake between sleep cycles, they are not gonna get distracted by what's in the room and they are more likely to fall back asleep. The second reason is it can actually help your little one stay asleep for longer in the morning. So typically your child's sleep will now be lighter in the morning, so it's easier for them to wake up. And if light is streaming into their room, then it is going to tell their body that it is time to wake up and they are going to wake early. So if you want your little one to sleep in past the sun rising, then you want to make sure that their room stays dark up until the time that you want them to wake up. You also want the room to be quiet because when they are napping during the day and in that early stages of the morning, they are in light sleep and it's really easy for them to wake up. So if you have birds chirping, dogs barking, traffic noise or family members walking around, it is going to wake them up more easily between sleep cycles and they are going to find it extremely difficult to fall back asleep. The fifth thing you wanna do is make sure you have a consistent bedtime routine. So every time you put your baby down for a nap or for sleep in the nighttime, you want to make sure that you are using a bedtime routine and it doesn't need to be complicated. It might be walking them into their bedroom, pulling down the blinds, putting them in their sleeping bag, singing a song or reading a book and then putting them down in the cot. If you consistently do this routine, it will tell your little one that it is time to sleep. So they know what to expect and what you are expecting from them. The sixth thing you want to do is give them the opportunity to sleep more regularly in their designated sleep space. So if that is a crib, then you're letting them sleep in their crib throughout the day. Now, this is going to make the sig most significant change in regards to your baby's sleep because you are going to reduce the likelihood that they will wake up frequently through the night if they are aware of and comfortable sleeping in their crib rather than your arms. So there are lots of different ways that you can do this. You can do it a really quick approach or you could do it a really gradual approach. So if your little one will only sleep in your arms, then that is fine. You might initially get your little one to sleep in your arms, but in the bedroom where the cot is. And then once they're comfortable doing that, you might get them to sleep initially in your arms and then put them into the cot once they are asleep. And to help with that transition, it is often really helpful if you hold their arms and their legs still and just shush them to help them fall asleep. Then once they are comfortable doing that, you might want to just get your little one used to being in the cot awake but drowsy and you are beside them shushing them or singing that song to help them fall asleep and then you will gradually withdraw yourself from that bedroom. So there are lots of different ways that you can do it, but if you can get your little one to fall asleep or potentially sleep more in their cot or crib, then they are going to wake less frequently in the night because they know where they are and they are not going to freak out. Now, if your little one is catnapping and you want some tips on how to address that when they're under six months of age, just to make it a little bit easier, then make sure you check out this video. Also remember to click on that free PDF document in the description box below, and I will see you next week where I'll share more parenting tips and tricks.